Hello, everybody, and welcome to Catching Up With The Fappenings, this time being Andy Roar, that Star Wars show that nobody saw, except us and ten other people. That was a pretty exclusive Same. crew. Hey, look, at least thing. we're getting one more season, at awesome. least. I've already seen uh, posts talking about the excitement because we're going to be getting cameos in there, like K2SO, and I was like, better not be a fucking cameo. Ooh, boy. Better be I a sure character. Do. Sure no, do actually, love my cameos. He was like the best thing about Rogue One, so hopefully he'll be good in Andor too. But we shall see. So, you guys felt the need to send some messages our way? We're going to give them an old read-through and answer -y. Do. Uh, and, and here goes that very thing. Number one, first of all, uh, don't believe on Dora's lies. Bosh lives. I mean, anything to you guys? Bosh? Uh, no clue. No, oh, I got nothing either. All right. Bosh, was, wasn't he the bounty hunter? Bosh is a detective. I know that. Like, I'm talking about Bosk. Book. Bosk. Is that as, is that, I thought it was, oh, okay. Trandosian guy. The guy from Star Wars, not from whatever you're talking about. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I see. Right. Anyway, uh, you should play Alan Wake and Control, Massives. I've played Alan Wake. Have you guys? I have not played I Alan haven't. Wake. But well, I, 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 I I've should. not played Control. What's Control? I played a couple hours. Of, it's uh, Remedy's newest game um i played a couple hours of it uh, but i hear good things about it so i should give it another shot what's I think right? the same universe uh it's like uh as i understand it it's kind of metroidvania like still third person action game sort of remedy thing with like telekinesis powers and stuff like that but a bit more of a uh yeah sort of metroidvania structure and i believe that it's set in the same universe as alan wake so i i don't know what that if you played alan wake maybe that's more of a sell for you hmm okay I just read Andor is not true Star Wars, and all I could do was laugh. But you know, it's true. Andor is too competent to be Star Wars. Oh ho oh, oh. oh, oh. ho! Hey, oh. That is the best argument you could make for why it's not like, especially Disney Star Wars. It feels fucking weird with all of those guys. I mean, That's I often I don't play. consider it when I'm thinking about Star Wars. A lot of the time, I'm thinking about Disney Star Wars the, dude, there, the... and then it's like, oh yeah, and then there's Andor, like, over here, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's on its own little island, yeah. The, a as they've bit. dubbed, Mandoverse feels like this horrific slime that Andor has nothing to do with. Doesn't even know it exists. No. Like, if I saw no, I think, Cassian uh, I and think... Mando in the same frame, I'd be like, what the fuck? I think Mon Mothma's showing up in, uh, in Ahsoka, though. Yeah... Which do? that that is one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, right, because it's the same universe. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder how Dave Filoni will treat her. Uh well, I mean, if anything, you'd say hopefully her like appearance in that show is mercifully brief so that the majority of her time can be an Andor. Brief. Uh Lord Longbong of Mubslington Abbey. Is there any good chance of a Kong Fap? Of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'll be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. A whoa, Wags, these scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I, I think there's a good viable a chance of that. Yeah, I think I think that'd be interesting. It'd be good Long to see Kong, some Long Zilla, Long Kongage. Long. We still. I look forward to the day that we watch Kong versus the Zilla. That's, that's always. Uh, yeah. By the time we get around to it, the sequel will probably be out where the two of them fight against like Space Godzilla or something, some evil variant. Mecha Godzilla 2, you know. It'll be it'll be fun on the bun. So yes, it'll happen. I just started watching Chernobyl and reading House of Leaves, which are now two of my favorite pieces of media. Also, New Fear Unlocked, Radiation Poisoning. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty bad. Uh, yeah. It is it is pretty terrible. Um isn't it just Might like it just it just makes your cells you melt die. you basically you melt yeah like yeah you, I think what radiation it ionizes does, your cells right that's what it does when you get yeah it knocks to it your knocks it knocks around all your electrons and stuff so that your cells can't bond together properly uh really Actually really horrific. bad stuff yeah it's like really melting it's it's it really one of the worst ways um to go yeah. 
It and, can. Uh, yeah, it's Chernobyl weird. really. Well, it's just I guess to expand on it, Chernobyl had um because it was episode three. That was the episode when the firefighters, um, in the hospital, feel like uh that episode and all of that stuff like uh kind of drove home how uh how well, terrifying I remember when, it was when we were watching it and he picks up the um the, what's that kind of brick cold with uh, the guy radiators. picks up the graphite he picked up the graphite brick that um, it, uh, i think we we were all just like oh like, fucking oh, hell yeah. like you're yeah. so fucked mm -hmm. well it's the the crazy thing with that show is like how much it makes terrifying what is essentially an invisible killer um because it's that shot when they were looking into the reactor when it was on fire and it's like what are they looking at? They're looking at, like, a piece of human machinery that's, like, being destroyed, and yet the vibe you get is almost, like, cosmic horror. Yeah. Of, like, jeez, this is, like, this is, like, a... This is a force of, of like, nature that, w like, that is just... It's, like, can't even imagine, like, what it's... Well, I guess we can, right? You know what the consequences of it are gonna be, but still, it's, like, it's sort of a strange kind of terror. Acast. I was sitting in my local cinema watching previews for The Machine, which was Mare Rat, okay, and a trailer for Jedi Survivor came on screen, and I was blown away. I've never seen a video game trailer in a theater. Blew me away. I've seen them I've for seen some time now. I saw, uh, I remember, like, back in the day, Ratchet and Clank 3, I remember seeing a trailer for that in cinemas. Yeah, um, I would go, like, my guess would be as early as, or more than, than eight years ago. I'm trying to think of what film it would have been, but... I remember seeing Minecraft trailers on there once, and I was like, ugh. <laughs> like, this, what's going on? No I see, I see plenty of uh, ads for, yeah, video games. Not not nearly as often as film trailers, obviously, but yeah, you, you see video game trailers. I saw Fast X for the lols, and good god, it felt like it was made for the people who thought Andor was boring. <laughs> Lol, high rags, <laughs> a drinker, a platoon. Hello. Um, I mean, the... I'm totally fine with films like that having their place. It's totally cool with me, but yeah, if someone said, like, let's fix up Adol with some racing scenes, I'd be like, oh. And people think AI will replace people. It can't even write an apology. Shake my head. Hey, man. That, that, that's probably not AI. It's just bad humans writing a bad apology. Lord of Ring. I literally just finished Andor, and I haven't cared so much about anything from Star Wars in years. Give me a man-eating cereal talking to his mum over the piss saber any day. Also, howdy, raggedy, rag raggedious. Hello. Yeah, uh, there was even... You know, the, the, the way they talk to each other, Cyril and his mum, it's very... Uh, there's loads of great subtext in it, and they like cut each other off yeah. and ahead of each other. They know exactly what the other wants from the conversation. Good stuff. One thing I've come to believe in my career is that there's nothing scarier in a scary movie than silence. People love to throw ominous tones and drones and atmospheric rumblings, and I don't like any of that. I really think silence makes you sit forward when you hear ambient sound. That, to me, just the absence of sound, is way more frightening, and it lets you zero in on little details like the sound of a faucet dripping. Uh, it starts to make you hyper-aware. I was always wanted to lean into that direction. I think that's kind of where the horror lies. Mike Flanagan proving he is incredible at directing horror. Hi, Rex. Hello. Yeah, he uses a lot of silence. Yeah, and I wish more people would too, quite frankly. I am, this is uh, uh, an interesting question. Just watch The Descent, and there's a lot of instances where they opt for just silence, ambient noise, instead of doing, like, the sound effects or ramping up the, like, background noise to basically tell you how you're supposed to feel. Well, not Good background God, noise, but, the... like... The Descent is, like, such a great uh, teaching movie for horror. Well, it's got, so it really is. it's got so many great lessons That's... in there, and it's so low budget. Yeah, but it never feels low budget. It's more important right. for you to um, understand your budget and work with it than it is to just have a big budget, I think. Um, it doesn't feel in any way cheap. They had an idea. The amount of money that they worked with was able to excellently capture that idea and I uh, have a great have an immense level of respect for it I can't wait for us to see the sequels because nope. no. well, what do you mean this the descent was so good and they made sequels so so what so we gotta we gotta watch them and see how good they are you know I I was going to sleep the other night probably recently because we watched it recently <laughs> and I was thinking about your idea of how to do a sequel and I was like 
try I was like I was like watching the movie in my head of a descent to where Ooh, a good game. Descent two? Yeah, descent two. I've never heard of it. Fair enough. Um anyway, the the whole like, you know, the 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 team aren't reported as being found. And then easily e the easy way is just the brother of one of them, probably Juno, I think that would be the most interesting to go with. Especially being that they you argue they come from like an active family. Maybe he's uh, ex military as well. And then uh, you know, the, the, the rescue teams went to go and find them and they found no trace, or at least very little trace, because they don't check the correct caves, right? They gave, they said they were in different ones. Um, but then, you know, it could be that Juno would have told him her mother or something about her plans. So then, uh, the, the you know, the more information is spread out in terms of where they may have gone, but there's just no trails to follow. There's nothing. So, you know, you have that, that passionate bro who's like, I'm going to take some friends and we're going to get in there and figure out what the fuck's going on. Because uh, it's pretty mysterious for like, how many was there? Team six, seven girls? Yeah, uh, something like that. For them all to go missing. Um, you know, it's like, and they just run all of the scenarios. Like, could have been a cave-in, could have been, could have been something else. Maybe, maybe something horrible happened to him. Some, some weird guys out there kidnapped him. Who knows? They were alone out there and stuff, and then just, uh, they go in with a bit more, you know, I don't know if I'd make a team bigger than what we had in the first one. Definitely look forward to, like, creating a whole bunch of new characters, and they approach with a bit more f preparation and firepower, and, uh, maybe dig a little deeper and find that this thing runs way further than they thought. And 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 then and then you could probably even make another one after that, of, of where they the the creatures are like being exposed more so to you know people find them the more information blah blah blah. But then you have the thought of maybe it's best it's just one movie. I think one movie is the way to go. It seems like one of those one and done kinds of stories. And I fully recommend it, especially for those looking I for do some too. horror. Absolutely, I would highly recommend The Descent. Uh, updating to add a campaign? What about saying you'll add PvE to your game and then not doing it? Overwatch 2 is so funny. I mean, that, yeah, that was, uh, that was, like, the big selling point for that game, right? Was that it was gonna have a, uh, like, story PvE component. So now that it's gone, it's like, well, what is that game? What is the point of Overwatch 2? This, uh, reputation's tanked now, isn't it? Well, it's just Blizzard in general, right? Though I heard yeah. Diablo 4 is pretty good. Uh, Indiana Jones 5 Unbridled Rage, Mola? I, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be great. Why would you assume otherwise? What the hell? <laughs> it's being... It's just... Gosh, in this era, any sequels that come out are usually filled with a lot of great insight into like the legacy of the characters. What the whole franchise meant to people when it first came out. You know, I'm excited. I think everyone should be. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, definitely. Hello all, hope you're doing well. Where does Andor land in your Star Wars rankings? I'm back and forth on whether it's better than Return of the Jedi. Um, um, Return of the Jedi is complicated. So, I think it's safe to say that the greatest payoff of Return of the Jedi is more potent than the greatest payoffs in Andor. But even that, I could imagine someone saying, no, I prefer... You know, like some of the speeches that are given, or some of the greatest action scenes. Like, okay, but at least for me, and that, and to be fair, that's one of my favorite payoffs in just all of Star Wars, right? The uh, the throne yes. room scene. How could it not be right? So, um, but then I think the reality has to set in. Like, Andor is way more consistent than most of Return of the Jedi. It just is. Yeah, um, I do, I wouldn't begrudge anyone for thinking that Andor was just you know better overall. Um, I don't even know if I'm that way or not. Um, uh, it's to yeah, like it's tough to say. Consistency rank, wise, um, but it you know I put it above the rest of Disney Star Wars and the prequels. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, it's easily yeah yeah it's absolutely there. Um, this is above the prequels undoubtedly. This is above. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, th I think with Return of the Jedi, it, it gives it a run for its money. That's for sure. There's definitely a competition there that I can see. 
Oops, start listening to Efab about a week ago. Just wanted to say thank you for the great content. Week ago. Oh. Welcome, welcome. Oh, a week. Uh, we have a newcomer in our midst. You know, Hello. if any of you wanted to send something but didn't know whatever message to put in and so you leave it blank or whatever, which some people do, I'd be super curious, especially if you're a viewer within the last, like, year or so, that what was the video that made you aware of EFAB? It would be interesting to know, right? That would like, be interesting to know, yeah. I know there was, and also, we had a um, super chat at one us, point uh, that said they found us through Arcane coverage, and I was like, oh, that's neat. That is neat. Found us on something positive yeah. before we devolve into our typical negativity and destroy yeah. art one thing at a time. Uh, and of course, uh, as Fringy was telling me before uh, we you know, started this recording, if you don't know what to ask or what to say, uh, pick a pair of Mega Man characters and uh, ask us which design uh, of them why, we prefer. Why must you turn this podcast into a house of lies? Uh, Fringy, Fringy didn't want me to mention that, but I did. Uh, and is it really so a house of lies if lie. he's only the one lie? Like, we've, pl we've said plenty of things that are true. How would it be a house of lies after one lie? Well, I mean, it's the same with, uh, well, I mean, that was what the doctor, w the dentist was saying in The Simpsons, right? Ralph was lying about brushing oh, his teeth. Oh, so because the dentist says it, here. it's okay, just true so now? Okay, so it's okay. Okay, all right. So it's, 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 wow. This is incredible. It's just, it is, it is incredible. This is, uh, this is uncredible is what this yeah, is. I was going to say, yeah. I just didn't realize dentists had such sway over your opinions, Fringy. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind next time. I'll have to ask whenever you say something very strongly. I'll be like, did a dentist say this? Well, let's ask the dentist first, see if it's okay. Are you done? Uh, yeah, yeah I think so. Okay. All right. Unless Molly's done anymore. I'm good. We didn't get a denial there, Rax. Hi, Rax. So consider. Hi. This is my first super chat ever. Blessed be the dawn. And a question for Fringy. What are your thoughts on the Ace Attorney series? Cheers. Uh, I've never I mean, played I really Ace Attorney like series. Wow. Well, <laughs> Has your dentist played the Ace Attorney series? And then you cut me off. That was rude. Um, what I was going to say was I really like uh, those games, but... I, uh, I'm not sure what I would say in terms of, like, if I would give, like, a broad general recommendation of them, because they are, they're more like visual novels than, like, hyper-interactive, like, mechanics-focused video games, um, but I find them, like, super entertaining, the ones that I've played anyway. I think I've played, like, three or four of them. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're super, like, entertaining and fun. Uh, but the the, uh, the I believe that the the team that made um, Ace Attorney made Ghost Trick as well, which is a really cool game that's got an interesting like puzzle mechanic and a super cool art style, um, and a pretty engaging story as well. But that one is uh, not many people have played that game. I remember that was uh, Matthew Matosis made a video on it that uh, prompted me to to uh, pick it up and and play it, and it was real fun. I'd say that that one would be something that I'd find easier to recommend because I think it has more involved uh, gameplay mechanics. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Sweet. Sword Chernobyl and it's filled with Andor cameos and good writing. It should have included a content warning for all the naked miners, though. I remember that payoff. They're all real hot, and so they need to... They got the other hot, yeah. They gotta dig down underneath the uh, thing. They gotta, they gotta install that concrete barrier down there. What was so their that, uh, uh, meltdown? Doesn't get into the uh, groundwater. What was their fate? Health uh, a lot um, of them died. A lot of them died early. Uh, like a lot, a lot of them had them complications. Early. Yeah, from the radiation. Yeah. They didn't. The reality them died in the, the show, uh, but yeah. No, it was like later there years later. You know, yeah, later there were a lot of liquidators that were brought in who had uh, health problems later on. Um, it's it's kind of the problem is like in terms of deciding what the death toll was from Chernobyl. It's 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 a lot easier to point to like the firefighters or the people in the facility who died like within a week or two as obvious clear casualties from um from the the uh the accident. But then it's like, well, what about the people who got you know some kind of cancer ten years later? What about the people who had these other sort of health problems years later? How how well can we sort of account for them as being direct consequences of them you know working in Chernobyl? It's uh yeah. it's complicated. Very tough but to I mean, track that sort of thing, especially, you know, given that area and, you know, with things switching over politically and trying to, yeah, it, it's, it, I imagine it's a really tough thing to really find out. But, 
what we do know is yeah a lot of the the miners who went underneath to um to excavate to prevent it was preventing the uh it was preventing the the stuff from the reactor hitting the water right and potentially causing like even yeah more that's what the miners were there to do they had to build yeah. that big uh pad that concrete pad underneath the reactor yeah a, a lot of those guys got ill um yeah they did get ill Uh, Morley, you should come to Barry Island. I've I've been to Barry Island. I know Barry Island. Uh, not to be confused with an island in which many people there are fans of Barry. Uh, it's a different thing. Television show Barry on HBO. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there are four indie movies, Drinker. It's okay, though. Everyone forgets that Tintin exists. Tintin? Tin. I never saw oh, Tintin. And, uh, I never saw it either, but I, no, I want to. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Den of Nerds and Star Wars Theory hate and or literally for not having any cameos. Also for having bricks and screws. Yeah, we try not to... We don't... I don't, I don't, I don't give uh, their opinions on Star Wars too much seriousness, uh, which is odd for a channel that's it's like the most popular Star Wars channel. The bricks but, and screws uh, thing is absolutely fascinating. Like, like we can't have we can't have that before. shit in there. It's got to always be the aesthetics of any of the buildings we've seen so far. You can't have anything else. It would be madness. It makes me think, like, have there never been bricks in all the prequels and the uh, the OT? Was there never a brick? I've, there's got to be, right? And if there wasn't, does that mean that bricks can never be used? <laughs> is that how that works? I don't know. It just seems like a real weird. Thing to say. No bricks allowed. Poor birds. Uh, I use your critiques to help with my writing for my horror novel, and my writing has improved. I'm also happy you don't do culture war focus on writing. Uh, just... We will happily, <laughs> happily avoid that. I just think that... Sure, um... pops up here and there, but yeah, we, we'll talk about the, the thing itself gladly. Culture changes a lot. Our um, sort of takes on a movie, hopefully, would sort of be similar to if we were running this show 20 years ago and 20 years in the future, where it's just mm. about the film itself. Um, yeah, I think so. You're welcome to acknowledge culture surrounding it, and we will here and there, right? Like, yeah, again, depending on whatever happens, if some... Like, like House of Dragons Season 2 comes out, and everyone's talking about... Uh, Matt Smith because he recently went on a big blimp and there was an accident or something. We we probably mentioned that or something. You know, like in fifty years from now, if someone wants to watch that review, just be like, "Oh, did he? Okay, I don't see how that's okay." But oh yeah, the same way they talk about like Mark Hamill's car crash and yeah. things of that nature, or um, you know, like Heath Ledger dying in mid production, that sort of thing. Uh, it you know, it, it's important. It is a part of you know cinema history that those things happened, and it, it's good to recognize that those things happened and. It informs why uh, decisions might be made in the material itself. Well, yeah, we you know have a bits and bombs here and there, but I yeah. I can understand what you mean by that. Yeah. Um, I love y'all. Seen seventy five percent of episodes. Any comments on SK? Well, you can you can finish them. You don't have to stop at that point and just assume <laughs> it's bad from that point on. You I've can seen watch the whole episode if you want. Plenty of the people in Discord are like. You know they'll watch one or every other one because they're very selective. Everyone these days they want they want specific topics slash if we do a particular thing and it's like you know what that's fine that's it's fine. It's fine it's all right it's all right. What is the amount of total hours that you would have to spend to watch every single episode of EFAP if you started from the beginning? Not a problem. Well, you know that's a good. I think on uh, the website efap.me there and is. Uh... Does it account for just the main episodes or does it include? Minis, Maybe, I'm not sure. Minis, Off the top of my head, gaming. I can't remember. I thought it included everything, but uh, part of the problem, of course, is that most people are fans of more than just the one channel, and so if you're fans of, let's say, you know, Nerdrotic, um, Drinker, and, and EFAP, you got you got a lot per week to keep up with if you've got, like, a full-time job and you don't listen to it at work, and, you know, just normal duties, like family stuff, or just taking care of things. Um, so I can imagine you want to pick and choose which episodes you like to jump in on, but... Hopefully we provide enough different things that everybody has their thing covered eventually. 
I mean, I would say so. I would say that there is a good amount of variety in terms of the format and the topics that are covered, and films old and new, and video games. Yeah. Uh, I use... Oh, wait. Uh, though the sequels are often interpreted as sequels, they are really standalone films. Bearded iDubs. Bearded iDubs? I what? what? <laughs> Bearded eye dubs? I'm not sure Bearded who that eyes. is. Bearded eye dubs. <laughs> like the idea of there's eye dubs and then there's bearded eye dubs. <laughs> I can't I cannot help but think about Neil Breen with his with his what, fake you think beard on. Looks like Oh, you think? No, I mean, when, when someone t says bearded eye dubs, like, oh, there's Neil Breen and bearded Neil Breen in this movie. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> Though the sequels are often interpreted as sequels, they're really standalone films. I mean, they're both things. Uh, they are films on their own, but they're also a sequel to but a they thing. They're also sequels. Yep. I always enjoy seeing you guys talk about Andor. I like talking about Andor. It's fun. And you'll get more of I it. I do like talking about Andor. I want to get more attention on that. I want more people to see it. Yeah, That's some good rat right there. Rolls around. I'll have to figure out what kind of coverage we want to do. I'm still not sure it will work for like EFAP TV. I don't think it will. I think I'll just be paying attention too much. I think it'll be, I think it'll be kind of too, mm -hmm. in, you know, attention intensive. But we'll definitely talk about it. Bree, since you liked Fox in Space, have you seen the Donkey Kong animation Return to Crocodile Isle? It's excellent. Recommend to any DK fan. Uh, I've not heard of it. Uh, but I might check it out. Uh, not sure if any of you've played it, but if so, I'd love to hear EFAP's take on Castle Crashes. A playthrough for EFAP Gaming with you three would be great. I've heard it is a good co-op game. I've played oh, it many good. years ago. That's that's going way back. It's a classic now. Did you think it was good? Uh, yeah, I remember it being good. It's a it's like a like an arcade game. Uh, yeah, where you fight, uh, you know, uh, on the same screen. You go forward and you fight things. I'm, I think I'm vaguely familiar with it. I'm not sure if I ever played it for longer than, like, ten minutes. I think in the hopes of setting it up to be something to stream with friends, and then we just never did. But maybe one day. A shilling or Republic credit for Andor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Your credits are good here. Uh, thoughts on Rick and Morty Season 6? I thought it was good. Hi, Rags. Hello. I only watched the premiere, because uh, I don't care about that show anymore. Yeah, me and Fringy kind of got disenfranchised from that. Yep, I totally. I, just, with us too I don't much. care anymore. Don't care. Yeah, I'm just not interested. Uh, Rags, you know all these horrific Pokedex entries people of you read? Well, how about yep. this one? Swab Blue right. from the Ruby Podex, Podex, Pokedex entry. I'll, uh, uh, Swab Blue? Yeah, I'll post the name. Alrighty. Well, you carry on with the next super chat, and I will get that lined up for us. They are suffocating Phoebe Waller Bridges' conjoined forehead twin with her hair in the new Indiana Jones film. Hashtag justice for the mole. Hi, little platoon. I have no idea what that's referencing exactly, but we will be seeing her soon enough when we watch that movie. It's gonna be uh, gonna be the Indiana Jones girl for the film, I'm sure. Um, oh, when does that come out? It comes out soon, right? Within like a month or so. When was it? Um, I'd have to check, but the Flash, of course, is coming first. Absolutely. <laughs> Flash <laughs> gets priority for us. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Which one would you rather see? And my answer would probably be the Flash, because it'll be such a goofball movie, and I don't have to be in pain. I have, I get to be laughing, really. I assume. Um, it'll probably be the Flash, yeah. I think it'll be goofy and crazy, and I think Indiana Jones, the Dial of Destiny, uh, would will just be bad and mm -hmm. you know in a more regular way. And, and I'm and I'm sure it'll probably be entertaining in that aspect. I think, but yeah, not quite, not quite to the same level as the Flash will probably be. I reckon. Greetings, all. Hi, Rags. Hello. Just chatting to inform, I started EFAP last August, and I'm currently at 124. I will continue wow. my foray until I catch up. Farewell. Very impressive, my dude. Neato. Keep up the good work. You are you're becoming quite the EFAP historian. Yeah. you still got a few episodes to go. A couple. One or two. Here and there, but yeah. yeah. But some of the best. But some of the best. 
Some of the best and are, are they are ahead of you. I won't tell you which ones though, so I'll have to watch every single one to make mm -hmm. sure. Is it true um, that Scottish people can't say purple burglar alarm? It's difficult for them, but they can do it, I think. Purple burglar alarm. Yeah, there you go. It's very Kinda. difficult, yeah. Um, so, uh, by the way, I got the Poke uh, Pokédex entry for Swablu. Do it. Uh, this might help if I provide a picture of Swablu. I will copy this image and I will paste it here. So that, so for context, look at him go. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember him. The ruby entry they wanted us to read. Um, ba -ba -ba. Swablu has light and fluffy wings that are like cottony clouds. This Pokemon is not frightened of people. It lands on the heads of people and sits there like a cotton fluff hat. Is that it? Yeah. Oh. So I guess that's like wholesome. And they oh, were saying, I guess like, that's oh, why they, okay. It? Yeah, they're like, you, you generally hear ones about like, Child abduction, souls being sucked out of people, you know, you know, He's innocent just like, people going a missing. Hat. Yeah, 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 haunting the dreams. And also, I was like, a, a, a testament to how to, to Pokemon sort of design elements in terms of their evolution. This is uh, Altaria, which is what Swablu evolves into. Um, and there, there's definitely, you know, you see the connection, the clouds have, you know, sort of. It's like he's a bird, a bluebird in a cloud, kind of, and I, mm -hmm. and I think that's a pretty appropriate uh, evolutionary step on his what, journey um, towards becoming perfectly uh, suited for his environment. What gen is this from? Ruby, right? Because um, uh, if it's Ruby, I, that's I definitely remember it from Ruby and Sapphire. So I think it's three. This well, it's number three thirty four. Yeah. So yeah, it seems to be yeah. So gen three because I have one hundred and fifty Pokemon yeah. gen one and two. Fair enough. Let me see. Yeah, and it's, it says it's 45 pounds. I would have guessed lighter. He's a big boy. <laughs> uh, theories on Andor's low viewership. Oh, I think we've discussed it before, but uh, to recap, I think that one of my reasons is that, Star, or is that Disney has, and to a degree George has done this, but Star Wars isn't really like... Um, about drama and political intrigue and like deep character conversations for the most part. Um, it's not to say it's bad, but especially now, especially in Disney Star Wars, the audience has been particularly almost like trained to be very, very superficial, to surface hate, level. To hate bricks and oriented. screws. Yeah, to hate bricks and screws. They've been trained to look for cameos and references and tying this person to that person. They want to see their remember berries pop up. Um, it's just not the kind of show that you typically see in the Star Wars universe. And it, I think, throws people sort of for a loop when they get into Andor. And there's, like, no bombastic action scenes, and there's no fucking Mandalorians flying around, or lightsabers getting pulled out, and there's no Darth Vader. It's just a story about, like, characters interacting in this world, and you know, doing stuff and making in, in, you know, interesting decisions. And there's real stakes and tension, which I legitimately just don't think that a lot of Star Wars people want. Yeah, I mean, after so many shit shows in a row, people were less interested in checking out whatever Disney has next. And then it's about a character that nobody cared about anyway. People weren't even sure who Cassian Andor is. Was Andor was even a person? Battle. Was it a place? <laughs> An event? And there was always going to be an uphill battle, and following Obi Wan Kenobi in particular, yeah, it's kind of a not. It was just set up in a bad position there. Be if really... this came out after Rogue One, who knows? Oh yeah, but, uh, yeah it'd be a really cool, cool experiment think, to run that. Yeah, because between Rogue One and now, we got a Star Wars movie or two Star Wars movies, right? We got the Last three, Jedi. The Last Jedi, uh, Solo, and the f um, what fuck? What was the, the Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> Rise of Skywalker, <laughs> no, and then we no. got Mandalorian season one through one and two. We got Boba Fett, and we got Kenobi. Yeah. So, yeah, and then Andor comes out, and it is like like we said earlier. It, Andor is like its little thing in the Star Wars universe, to where it's like easy to believe it's almost like just a passionate like fan series that was made by people who actually really, you know, really do care about it. Um, it's off on its own little island over there. 
First time you covered Andor was on Christmas. This time was two days after my birthday. I love Andor and EFAP, so you guys covering it kind of feels like an extra present. Oh, oh well, very glad to hear that. Or, yeah. Man, I'm... I mean, it, it's the same way for Arcane with me, at least. Like, I'm, I'm very optimistic, but there's always that part where I'm like, Oh, boy. Oh, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. So, you know, hopefully with Andor Season 2, we get another really, uh, another, get another really good one. Star Wars fans are acting like furries now. Yeah, I'm a Star Wars fan, but not like those other Star Wars fans. Rags would know what I'm talking about. Definitely. I do know what you're talking about. Well, the Star Wars fandom, thanks to Disney, by the way, because I really don't think the prequel OT sort of split was that significant. But now there's like fucking three different huge passionate groups for Star Wars that exist and hate each other. And it's like, good job. And the, I don't think they can release anything now that all Star Wars fans enjoy. No, you, I, I don't you know, think even so. Andor came crashing down, kind of like Andor's probably their least successful thing, and we think it's their best thing. Easily their best by by a significant margin. Yeah, not it's not even close. Absolute not even fucking disaster over there. Like, I mean, like we're we were talking about how like is it better or not than Return of the Jedi, and I think there's arguments pro and against, but nothing even else comes close. I think with Disney. What's well, a real story if that helps? Yeah. It's a real story. <laughs> Imagine we were like characters. we were sent in to do a um a board meeting where it was like a a sort of an accounting of the current state, and you have all the ba major creators of all of the different things to do with Disney there, and it's just like you do like a recap, and with every you have clips ready, and you're just like, all right, the lads who made you know for example. Uh, Mando season three, like John Favreau and Dave Filoni there, and you're just like, what the fuck was this? And you just play the clip of the guy getting vomited up, or him f slipping and falling in the bath. Like, you're just like, what are you doing? What is this? And just, and just to have them go like, well, what? Star Wars. <laughs> and then uh, we look at Tony Gilroy, and we're like, those uh, those bricks and screws? More of them. More. We need more of them next season. Yep. How did we go from bricks and screws to bricks and screws? He's gonna get himself like a little little brochure filled with Bricks and screws, and just start picking up some new ones. <laughs> bricks and screws. <laughs> the bricks and shoes brochure. Shoes. Bricks and screws sure, is gonna. No, well, Star Wars does have uh, shoes. Star Wars doesn't is, uh... have shoes, actually. They should yeah, never have shoes. Tiny little shoes. It's Check kind gloves. of indicative of the state of Star Wars if you have characters wearing shoes. I think that's one thing Andor does super well is it shows the variety of kinds of places, um, which it never was technically, which it was never really lacking but it kind of was um i mean we talk about it a lot in terms of like getting the hell off of tan tatooine you know not seeing the same places over and over but you know bouncing between you know ferrix and you know, mon moth was on curasan i think or mm -hmm. i forget exactly where it was specifically curasan quest um, chin if you were there with with mr gilroy right making the show yeah. and it was as it is and then yeah. the wizard He's in the he's in the little toilet and he comes out and he's like, Hey, I gotta tell you something. You know, hey. If you replace um what's his name? Uh is... Path but why have I forgotten it? I've known it so many times. It begins with a P, he's like the boss of the the agency for the Empire. Uh Ah oh. uh... bug me. <laughs> 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 it's one of those things where the second I try to grab it, it, it slips, and now it's gone. Yeah, it's running away. It's like, I'm going to see you. <laughs> My brain is going to remind me of it like two hours from now. Well, I mean, I would just look part it of up. Gaz. Part of Gaz. That's there it. There you go. Yeah. So if someone said, uh, replace Part of Gaz with Tarkin, and you will double the uh, audience interest and acclaim, do you do it? Uh, I really like having Part of Gaz. And it's going to be a CG like Tarkin, okay? Oh uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> like no, what, no, no casting suite. That, that, that's gonna be a lame, and it's not even gonna look that good. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna look a little uh, weird. But mm. I, I like that we have Podigas as like a different kind of a. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, you, I'm sure you understand the point of my question. Yeah. Right? No, the point is, yeah. Do you make this one small change to double the audience and therefore give it more of a chance to get more seasons? It's yeah, it's really tough to say, honestly. I don't think I would begrudge someone for doing it, especially if it's not like a crazy change, you know? It's nothing like huge. Well, he's but... not a major character in the story. Um, yeah, he's a recurring um... character, but at the same time, it's like, damn, shouldn't have to change it, you know, yeah, you <laughs> like that just to get twice as many viewers, wizard. 
Well, and then, then he's like, replace Luthen with Bail Organa, and we can double it again. Uh, yes or no? I, no, no, I can't. No, I, we that need Luthen. Be... I, I'm unwilling to. I'm unwilling to lose Luthen. I think Luthen I, uh... will be Luthen's place in Star Wars history will be revered, uh, as yes, it already it kind of is. Uh... If they stick the landing, yeah, one of the best characters in the the entire thing. Yeah, he's like uh, he is the the Cassius Clay of the Star Wars world. Okay, now final question. Uh, you have fuck. Why have I forgotten her name? The the main blonde girl who's like terrifying in terms of like your average sort of cog in the system for the empire. Storm, uh, or they not stormtrooper. The the imperial officer. Yeah. I, cool. I again I I forget her name, but, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Wizard says yeah, the one that Cyril's with. Yeah. Four times in the show, so four scenes, whichever episodes right. they'll be, she's gonna sneak off. And uh, meet with Darth Maul, and they're going to talk about how <laughs> he's, it's he's, so plausible. He's going to give her it's tips. It's so fucking plausible. He's going to tell her like, "Oh, you need to do this and this, and you'll rise at the Empire." And uh, and then blah, blah, in the blah. calls, he lights his lightsaber. And in his <laughs> yeah. yes, and in his scenes, there are no bricks and no screws. I don't see a single I mean, one. Yeah, it's just nothing but white. It's just he panels. He lifts up his robot leg and says, see my robot legs? <laughs> they once yeah, hit me. Yeah, Kenobi did to me. <laughs> yeah. And then the wizard Look, says, you know Obi-Wan Kenobi did to me on Naboo after Kenobi. I killed his master, uh, Qui-Gon yeah. Jinn. <laughs> the Force. He just says that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the wizard says, you have to have four scenes and they have to be at least five minutes, each one. And, uh, oh, God. Yeah, and That's you'll get you'll get five times the viewership than you got previously. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, fuck, that's hard. Because uh, I feel like you could. I feel I like she's a really good fight. character. In Marvel, by the way, yeah, could be a good character. If you accept all three of those, they all stack, so you get like five times two times three. <laughs> oh my oh, wow. god, we're gonna. I mean, it would. Oh. It would ensure that. Oh, it would ensure that we got, like, well, so my question for the wizard Lo losing would be, Luthen, though. Darth Maul, no, I, we're not losing Luthen, I don't think at all. No way, no. I, yeah, I, can't I, lose I, Luthen. He's too iconic, um, he's too important for the show, too important for Andor uh, as a character. I think um, my follow-up question to the wizard would be, do, so so no, let's, let's say I basically ask the wizard, if I, if I do the Darth Maul one, I get my guaranteed five seasons of Andor. If the wizard says yes, my follow-up question is, do I ever have to show Darth Maul ever again <laughs> after that first season? <laughs> well, the fact is, dude, I would, I would, if I were making like a season two, three, four, five after he'd been forced into season one, it's like, well, we're going to have to do everything we can to make it work, right? We'll do what we can. I actually work. Give him yeah. content to work with, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, I think in spirit of it, it'd be like, yeah, Darth Maul's going to be a fixture in this show now. <laughs> well, I guess if we uh we hope that the the writing team can uh make that work and do something with it. I mean, I think Fuck. he can, right? I mean, there's ways to make it work. Dark Maul Dark oh. Maul could be like a a backseat character kind of, you know, the and, and she's a good character. So, I mean, you could make it work, but You'd have to like really think about it and try. It feels sludgy. That's I think that's what it is. It just feels it just, sludgy. As well as if one of the requirements really is he has to activate his lightsaber in each of those four scenes. <laughs> like for fuck's at sake. At that point, <laughs> and yeah. here is a unicycle. And then, and then it has to play. It has to play Duel of the Fates as he spins it around. Oh. A bunch. <laughs> 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 yeah, he has like a while the orchestra's in the room. He says, do not fail me, <laughs> and then spins it and flies away like the Inquisitors whoa, whoa, whoa. do. Oh, yeah, yeah, the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> does, he ha does he have to say uh, Darth Maul out? I think he flies away like Ryan Seacrest. I love the idea that uh, that's the one scene of every time it comes up in the episodes where everyone on set is just like, ugh. And everyone's faces are all like down while they're filming it. They're yeah. like, yep. Yeah. The it's like doing a porno scene. shoot to afford college. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's like, you know. And yeah, I guess the, the final deal then would be that uh, the wizard said you have to have at least an hour worth of Vader in the show and it'll get times 50 people watching it. 
at what point do you say this show has become something not worth saving? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting about it is, of course, to destroy. it's still up to you to implement it, right? So, the thing is, an hour of Vader is like, fuck, that's gonna... I feel like, I mean, like, it, I think the Vader is a smaller stretch than Darth Maul, right? I think Vader would work better than Darth Maul, because Vader is, like, yeah, makes a prominent sense, yeah. character I really like involved not in having the Vader or the Emperor so show at all. Why? Yeah, well, I don't, like I, half I mean, and half it, and like maybe. I wouldn't be surprised if Vader shows up <laughs> in season two when. I wouldn't be surprised, uh, maybe, but like but as a, very briefly, maybe just as a hologram, maybe, something like maybe that, a, a or like a short meeting. At the very least, you get a, a name drop more than likely as an enforcer. Uh, but... probably, yeah. But if yeah. things escalate, yeah, if well, to the point where escalate, Vader needs right, to pay attention to it. You know. Things I mean, are going to escalate because it's going to lead directly into Rogue One. That's so kind of the point was... of the question, though, right? Like, sacrifice an entire episode's worth of time for strictly Vader stuff, but the show will be successful, like, guaranteed. Do you think, uh, do you think, uh, Talos is going to show up in, uh... Who's Talos? In, uh, ben Mendelsohn. Um, I've seen people say that they really want that to happen. Obviously him and K2SO, uh, especially. Uh, well, we got the, yeah... Yeah, that I think uh, I'd like to see K two S O. That and see, it's funny to be like, well, how's that any different from Darth Maul? It's like because he's part of the little Andor story, you know. And so, it'd be cool to see him go up. I know you're referencing Captain Marvel, but Krennic, right, is his name? Yes, I think that's his name. I forgot though. That's why it's like, oh yeah, Talos. Yeah, I, I feel like he's possible, right? What if the, do they get uh, Mads Mikkelsen? Maybe do we get any? connection at all to uh Jin Erso or do they leave that just for uh Rogue One? I think they're gonna leave it just for Rogue One. I think I think so. Yeah. I do I think not think we'll see Jin Erso. Which would be nice because I just don't really remember anything about her. We'll probably do a well, thing in the fucking post credits where they're like, we got some prisoners to pick up. You know, it's like and then they go, oh it's and then they name the transport name, which is the same transport name as in Rogue One or something where she's picked up. We'd be like, whoa. Mm. Yeah, I think he did be. say the I... last scene is going to be connected directly to like the first scenes of Rogue One. Yeah, I wouldn't be so surprised if it's literally surprising. Andor meeting up with that guy, and then maybe they, they yeah, have the little chat. I don't know. Um, it's just a fucking shame they didn't get to have more time. But oh no, well, yeah, they didn't have seasons, enough. They didn't like, have enough mall scenes. That was it. That's what destroyed they, them. I mean, that might have been the case is that they didn't have enough of the stuff that people have come to expect from Star Wars shows in conjunction with releasing after. A monumentally disappointing Star Wars show. Wow, disappoint. Well, I I think even we were disappointed with it, weren't we? Even though we weren't expecting well, it yeah, to be if you good. Check out our episode one coverage. We're just talking for ages about the potential and that we. I think we considered it okay. We were like, this is an I think okay, it was okay start. Yeah, but, but then, then just episode and two. <laughs> episode two sucks. Yep. <laughs> And then when he fought, fought Darth Vader and I, episode oh. three. Holy shit. In that big empty quarry. And then he fought <laughs> like, him again. He did fight him again, and then he, he left him there, even though he came to the conclusion that it wasn't his friend anymore, and thus he had no reason not to just kill him. And, and it was a, an a, basically a moral necessity to kill Darth Vader there. Yeah, they I made mean, it. Yeah, he did yeah, not yeah, do. Yeah, pretty much. Because some people say, like, oh, he was dumb to not kill him on Mustafa. I was like, well, at least he he beard the man and chopped off his limbs. He I think thought, he thought he yeah, was he dead. Chopped off, he chopped off all his limbs and left him to burn now. I think we've said before, <laughs> but the joke of, like, he just uses the force to push, 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 yeah. push, push into the lava. And he's like, there you go. <laughs> I remember there was the, the joke in Robot Chicken when he just takes his lightsaber and then Anakin's like, wait, are you fucking robbing me? <laughs> no. It's not the, uh, oh, that it's like, oh, I'm burning to a crisp, please just kill me. That's not the high ground way, I mean the Jedi way. I mean, you know what you've, I'm saying, I beat you and I'm on the high ground, so. <laughs> so that yeah, would but... make, that would make two Star Wars robot chicken references so far in this EFAP. How, uh, how Wait, very which was the first one? What, and here is a unicycle. Oh. Remember? Oh yeah. And, and yeah, how many know. Simpsons <laughs> references we had? Zero. Jesus. This, this deal. Zero, oh, yeah. this deal gets worse, worse and worse all the time. Here is a unicycle. You know, I was actually a... uh, watching a season twelve episode of Simpsons recently, and they go to this uh, park that's created in the nineteen seventies to imagine what the nineties would be like in the future, and it's like it's all absurd and insane and stupid. You know, just all irregular jokes. 
And then they're like, uh, the future will be filled with electric cars. And then Homer gets it one with Bart, and it's like, it's got like a sad face. It's chugging along, and it's just like, Arr! and then it goes, um, I can get you to half the distance you wanted to go in double the time, and you'll have to refuel me several times, and people will think you're gay. And then it just cuts to <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Man, the shade for electric cars. <laughs> Which, by the way, have, have they recently come under, like, severe fire for being shit? Uh, electric cars? Uh, electric, electric cars, cars are yeah. really fucking heavy, for starters. The batteries heavy? in those like, electric... Weight? Yeah, like, yes, they weigh a lot more than a regular car. I did not car. know that. I the lithium batteries that. are incredibly heavy. The lithium well, batteries you associate are... electric, like, things with being lighter. But I yeah, guess but something big right. enough to <laughs> operate a car, it's got to be massive. Because the bat, because the battery in a normal car, for those of you who don't know, is well, quite small. heavy. Yeah, yeah, it, they're small, but they're heavy. Well, the battery battery, in a battery car is are heavy. heavy. They are, yeah. and like a giant lithium ion battery that has enough charge to get you like 350 miles. Shit's heavy. Like I'm pretty yes, sure you're that right. I just never thought they weigh that. a lot more than. Uh, it's the reason why that whole like idea of Tesla trucks is kind of absurd because like the truck itself yes, would now, be enormously yeah. heavy, like compared yeah. to how much. And there's a weight limit on how much you can put on a road. Like roads have weight limits, and if you That's have a right. massive Bridges truck with a giant li lithium ion battery in it, the truck itself is going to weigh so much that like the amount that you can actually tow is going to be a lot lower than you could with a regular like diesel truck. There's also that, um, I believe lithium ion, like, they just, they just degrade. You just lose your, like, the amount of distance you can travel over time when you, when you have an electric car. Like, the, the amount of distance you can go just decreases over time with its use. And then there's also the fact that, like, as I understand it, electric cars are just more likely to just explode. They're just more likely to burst into flames than a, a regular car is. And yeah, those fires um, are really difficult to put out when it's a like lithium battery like on fire. So it's yeah, you know. You know, I guess we're sort of in the stage where electric cars have kind of become. I mean, maybe just maybe everything will just be you know maybe hybrids the way to go. Maybe that'll end um, up being what's uh, well. The thing, I think maybe this is just the hump we have to get over to progress. I think the real way to go is just better public transit. Just you need better public transit than like electric cars. Um, I think that works in a lot of areas, but I think there's just a lot of areas where public transit just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, uh, that's true, like in rural areas and... In, yeah, like around here, we've got cities. buses, but that's like it. And it's not like a huge deal, because, you know, a lot of people in massive swaths of, you know, America especially, everyone's got cars. Things are spread out. Um, a lot of suburbs and a lot of, you know, different cities, people moving around, commuting. Uh, people want to go places. It's more part of the culture. Um, so, yeah. I mean, of course, public transit is really good in a lot of places, but who knows what the solution will be. Is there viability I mean, to the Flintstone approach? Um, only what, if putting holes in the, the car and then walking. Only if, I, only if it makes the sound effects whenever I start taking <laughs> off. <laughs> I can't even do yeah. that. It's like a weird plastic pot and pan banging. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I like how it's just it's just walking, but with the dragon a massive car. With you. It's such a great little joke. The Flintstones was really good. Was? Eh, it's a living. I think they're rebooting it, unfortunately. Eh, it's a living. Only if John Goodman gets to play Fred. I don't know Fred's if they're gonna I'm not sure if that's gonna be the case. Just, that, he's a yeah. little bit old now. I don't know if he Who can... played who played okay. Barney in that well the well, I mean you could say he's downright prehistoric. Wasn't... But who played um, Barney Rubble? What, was oh, it? I, almost said, I almost said Barney it was Fife. Rick Moranis, but... right? Uh, was it? I forget. I thought it was. Rick was Moranis. It else? Rick the yeah, Manis. Uh, oh, damn. Let me, let me double check. I know that Halle Berry was in it. Uh, oh, yeah, it was uh, Rick Moranis. Yeah. What a weird and movie Rosie O'Donnell played, uh, played uh, Betty. I wonder <laughs> if it's any good. I probably not. <laughs> probably not, but I'd be curious one day. It's also and also it's it's again it's like oh live action remake of an animated television show. No thanks, don't need that. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, that it's... was like that was from a different time. Yeah, it's it's moved. Um, it it's very different... special. That, that's true. That is true. It is from a different time, but it's just again like the Flintstones is. 
The Flintstones, by its like very nature of its premise, is obviously like lends very itself cartoony, to animation. Very cartoony, yeah. It's a cartoon world, a prehistoric world with talking dinosaurs and crazy sort of uh, archaic contraptions and everything. Anyway, mm. back to Super Chats now. Come on, Disney has amazing lore, like Operation Cinder, where the Empire blew up loyal planets after Palpatine's death, because why build a new Empire? When oh, we yeah, first Operation heard about Cinder. Operation Cinder, <laughs> I think we thought it was a joke. Oh, well, because it was because you guys hadn't heard of it. We were watching it was no. mentioned in the Bill Burr episode in season two where they talked about Operation Center. And I think you guys were like, wait, what's that? It's like, oh, oh let me tell you. From, yeah, it uh, legit Star sounded Wars like Battle one Front of the two. stupidest fucking things that has ever happened. And like, that does not help because like Bill Burr's great performance and that random moment of giving so much character to someone who, you know, like I, looking back on that, I was so insane. It's just like, it, like they randomly decided to have character in their show. It's just like, why not? They did, yeah. And then they were like, let's reference the law, our law, Operation Cinder from Battlefront 2, where the Empire decided that the way to preserve power was to kill people who were loyal to them. To say, like, look, we're in charge. That we're is, so uh... in charge that your loyalty is rewarded with death. That's like, one of the most does... <laughs> difficult things to repair in terms of, like, writing. That is so fucking Shadow you... Hedgehog levels. What do you of... do with that if you're asked to make a story after it? Well, like, well, that was retarded. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a really stupid thing that... Because uh, the reason why it was done was because... Uh, I remember it was the big hype for Battlefront 2 was, wow, we actually get to, like, see an Imperial perspective. Like, that that's the, the side you get to play as. But Operation no, Cinder... It's so obviously and bafflingly, like, insane that it is the thing that makes the main character go, like, oh, yeah, maybe the Empire's bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, maybe people yeah. would think that. <laughs> maybe people would think that the Empire is bad. At least the Rebels won't want... kill me. <laughs> like, it's just like, what kind of plan is that? You kill the people who are loyal to you to show that you're in charge? What, what is that? Like, what the... It's yeah, like, no, 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 uh, this is the opposite of what you do. You kill the other <laughs> side. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. And then, and, and I guess the thing is as well, is if it was just in the video game, you could, you could kind of like pretend it didn't happen because of the way that, you know, people treat canon and like reflect things, whether it happens in movies or video games. But no, it's all, it all is, you know, it's all there and it's all, all canon. They're, I wonder if they're going to make a Battlefront 3. It, sounds, it seems like they've given up on that. Um, I think, I mean, Battle, Battlefront 2, despite everything they've done to it, which I've here is a decent amount, but it has such a negative reputation. Yeah, it does. Kind of like Battlefield, uh, which despite everything they've done to it, it has such a negative <laughs> reputation. Yeah, no uh, well, no Man's Sky I think No Man's Sky has a pretty good reputation. Yeah. yeah. It depends who talk to, one. as we are very well aware. Uh, I, I guess. True. But, but like, still... the game is successful and popular and still getting updates, so... Mm. Like, I'm, I... I'm pretty sure it's got thousands of active users. I mean, I would love a battle... F uh, or a Star Wars-themed Battlefield game, but, um... Who knows what they're gonna do. I, I don't want either of those series to just fade away and die. Um, it's just a shame that they would do so, not because of us, but because they made a lot of bad decisions, and... Uh, uh. Okay, I don't know who this is you're covering, but apparently this is a view a few people have, including Thor Skywalker and Robot Head. I don't know if you're covering them today, but this is very strange. I think uh, something we didn't cover, but that definitely um, is important, is like, okay, so we have categories of Star Wars and not Star Wars, and you put Andor in not Star Wars. Okay, cool. Kenobi. I'm assuming that goes into Star Wars, yeah? And they'd be like, well, well, yeah. Of course, and it's like, cool. Yeah. So, Kenobi's awful. So whether or not a thing is Star Wars, like, we need to have another axis now, where it's like, good and bad, not Star Wars, Star Wars. So if it's good, or if it's bad and not Star Wars, or bad and Star Wars, doesn't matter, it's bad. But if it's good and Star Wars, well, that's good. If it's good and not Star Wars, what does that mean? What happens now? We okay? We gonna make it? Is it alright? I'm not entirely sure of what it means to not be Star Wars, as we struggled on that stream to discover, but even if we agreed, is it really that bad if it's still good? Ultimately, the goal here is to have good stuff, right? Seems to me, yeah. 
I mean, if you went, if you wanted to make a, if you had a bunch of people who made a small offshoot series to the Lord of the Rings about the innkeeper who runs the prancing pony and a story of how his grandfather saw Gandalf and Thorin sit down and start their little quest. And then years later, you know, Frodo and Sam and Merry and Pippin stop by and all the shenanigans that happen in between. And it's an interesting drama about trying to keep this business afloat in this town outside the Shire and everything like that. It's like, well, it doesn't, it's not as Lord of the Ringsy as other Lord of the Ringsy stuff, I guess. But I mean, if it's good, it's good. If it's a really interesting, neat drama that takes place in that world, it's like, yeah, there's I'm probably not going to see any elves or, you know, Gondorians or whatnot. And you probably won't see an orc, but it'd be a really, really good show if it's written well. Don't do that, though. You'll ruin it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> stop touching Lord of the Rings unless you make Gollum too. That's the thing, Gollum, because it has Gandalf in it. I guess counts as Lord of the Ringsy. Like it uh... is, it's definitely Lord of the Rings, but uh, it is it's distinctive enough in its art style that it's not part of like the the Peter Jackson verse of Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's it's a different continuity in a sense, uh, sort of like Rings of Power. Uh, I don't think anyone continuity. is ever going to allow it to be considered anything close to canon in any way, shape, or form. Not even no. to fucking Rings of Power. <laughs> Rings of Power isn't even. I don't think. Yeah, people don't even consider that. Yeah, canon. People are like the book is like everything Tolkien wrote, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and then people people acknowledge the Hobbit exists, but they don't look at it. And then look over in the wastelands. Like, oh, look, I can see Gollum. Power. Bringing improve everyone's day by talking about the Kwoka? 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 Oh, yeah, the, the happiest animal. Like, the, the perpetually smiling little little kangaroo kind of looking fellow. Oh, yeah, they're happy, happy. We, we've, uh, we've talked about them on stream before. We've talked about them for sure. They, they, do, yeah. they do really uh, lift, lift, you know, your spirits. <laughs> like, let me see if I can find a... Yeah, like, I mean, come on, look at him. Look, I guarantee look at everyone will love it, is what they... Uh, they yeah, I mean, they are, they're adorable. Can you have them as a pet, <laughs> or are they wild? Oh, no, no, no. That, you, they're on uh, Rottenness Island. That's where they are. That's, on, that's the only they're place they're like They're like wild, on. but they're very used to human interaction. They are, because people go there all the time. Uh, and yeah, like... Let me let me see if I can find a picture of one of them smiling. Because that's the thing, they always look like they're smiling just perpetually. The one of the interesting things about the Quaka is that uh where they live, uh the side of the island that has no people, the Quakas are naturally, I guess you could say, uh diurnal. No, sorry, nocturnal. Whereas on the side of the island where you no know, visitors come. Uh, the quokka there are diurnal, so they're up during the day because that's when the humans are out. So they've kind of switched, they, they, they've over time swapped their sort of sleeping habits uh, to coincide with, you know, being around the people who, you know, give them a lot of food and stuff and essentially help them flourish. Yeah. I like how it's just for them, their evolutionary strategy is being adorable. <laughs> it's, it's, uh... Hey man, it's, that's, that's how it works. works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if it works, it works. I just keep smiling. I have gotten the parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes packets with the pizza before. Only ever use the red pepper flakes, though. Those are spicy. Yeah, I have used the red pepper flakes before. I have never used the... I, I, I never put even... I don't need more cheese on my pizza. I've never really eaten a pizza and gone, Man, if only there was more cheese. You don't put cheese on your cheese? What are you, a savage? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no cheese fiend. Oh, well. Um, but I, uh, yeah, but I do sometimes put on the little red pepper flakes. They're, they're, they're sort of nice. Sort of nice. Maybe Rags is just a huge fan of Lunchables pizza. No, <laughs> I'm not. Lunchables, lunch, those, lun yeah, those are like fun and great if you're like 10, but mm -hmm. they're not like, they're not, they're not good, you know. Rags was thinking of round table they give them. Maybe. Uh, burning my two-year freebie to say hello. Hello. How you doing? Hello. Hi. I've gotten many delivery pizzas in America, no less. Never have I ever gotten crackers with my pizza. Apparently you're not living. So much out there for you to experience. 
Dexter <laughs> Jet sir, serves crackers with his pizza. Pretty neat. I'm still waiting for that Dexter Jets a TV show. They still haven't made it yet. We'll get around to it. Mm -hmm. I watched Andor after EFAP's recommendation, and now I'm sad because my old passion for Star Wars is back, but I feel the future content will be sludge. <laughs> you don't need yeah. to feel that. It was. Mando Season 3 came yeah. out. <laughs> Went back. To, <laughs> that was the sludgiest of all three of the Mando Seasons. Yes, it was. It was the sludgiest sludge that ever. On the sludge meter, it scored very high. <laughs> <laughs> the sludge meter. Well, the baby was so cute, and look, there were so many Mandalorians. Apparently, that wasn't enough for some people. Unbelievable. H Bomber guy made a neat video on Deus Ex Revolution and said it's a movie game. Two years after The Last of Us Two came out, he didn't even make a Last of Us Two video. Uh, what's so weird is that Human Revolution is super gameplay focused. Um, yep. So unless he just has a weird definition of movie game, it must be in the context of Deus Ex as a franchise that that one. Still, I can't see what it. How? St I don't know. Human Revolution is like all it, gameplay. Yeah. yeah, and it's super. It's and it's good gameplay too. Um, whether it's you doing the action or like what I did was a a no kill like a like a pacifist stealth playthrough which was really fun to to you know, to play um I had, I had a hoot doing it so mm -hmm. uh behold my awesome milestone behold um yeah good stuff very much as an enjoyer since the first fap and never missing an episode i humbly request you massives watch danger five it's quality aussie comedy in my opinion Danger, Danger 5? Five? I don't think I've heard of that. Neither have I. I don't think I have either. <laughs> uh, I delivered pizza once. Rags is right about the crackers and parmesan, parmesan packets. They are free if you ask for them. Well, I'll be. Hashtag not my golem grease. Yes, the, uh, the famous greasy hair of golem that uh, tanks performance for a lot of people's computers, which is fair. A lot to spray, you know. Your favorite Deus Ex and why? It would be Human Revolution, because that's the only one I've played. <laughs> I ain't played them. Uh, the thing is, is that I have played Deus Ex, but I haven't completed Deus Ex. So, uh, with that, uh, well, I, I mean, I think Mankind Divided is the best one uh, between Human Revolution and Mankind Divided in terms of gameplay. But narrative, I think Human Revolution is stronger. Uh, but I, I imagine that once I complete the original Deus Ex, I might just, I might come to the conclusion I think most people have, which is that that one is the best one. I think they meant to say so for, for me to play it, but they said also Mao play Deus Ex. You're Mao. <laughs> That's your name. I'm Mao now. That's you, yeah. I noticed a distinct lack of Star Wars merch on this guy's shelves. How can we trust him as a true Star Wars fan? Very true. He knows the rules. You must establish your cred before speaking oh, like to matters. Is, like, yeah, your status symbol on whether or not you're allowed to talk about, like, <laughs> Star Wars is how much, uh, how much of that stuff do you have? Gonna need like, a few merchandise. more Funko Pops, buddy. <laughs> that's uh, that's a nice phrase. <laughs> you're gonna need a few more Funko Pops, buddy, before yeah, I listen that's... to you. It was pretty funny because, like, I don't really. I, I guess I understand the appeal of Funko. I no, you know what? Yeah, I understand the appeal, but I don't think I want one, like, really at all. I, I, I only have two, like and I, they're very specific. Um, whereas, so. uh, conversely, I recently discovered that there's essentially like Funko Pops, but they're little like rubber ducks <laughs> for characters, and I bought a Crash Bandicoot one. It's like a Crash Bandicoot little rubber duck, <laughs> and I I way prefer that as a gimmick. Like a rubber duck version of uh because I saw a rubber duck version of the Balrog. <laughs> it looks really cool. Whereas I don't know what a Funko Pop, you know, Balrog looks like. Mm hmm Sure it looks fantastic. Sure it looks yeah. great. Can't wait to get one. Uh good evening, Mothgy, the little Mothma, Mothma, Mon, and Critical Mothma. Okay. Are you guys related? I guess they all are. I assume because of the name that you guys would, uh, you know, might be related. 
If Andal changed his name and was plucked out and put back into the timeline after the sequels, it would be interesting. We'll build a pro-Empire planet trying to keep order and after its fall, move the franchise forward. There's all kinds of neat stuff that you could do with the changing political climates and where people's loyalties lie and what they decide to do after the events that we're so familiar with from the movies. Will they do them? Probably not. Uh, I don't even. I guess I'll have to post this. It starts with uh, "Hey, massives." Uh, wonderful Yo. little message, of course. And then it says, "Rags, please read hey. as Boba Fett." As Boba Fett. All right. I am Boba Fett. Let's see. Boba Fett. Da 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 da. Boba. Uh, let's see. He's got a bit of a like that that New Zealand sort of accent, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he a, does have a New Zealand accent. Yeah. When I was a child, I made a promise. I've spent my life tracking you down to fulfill that promise. You killed my father, Mace Windu. Would you like a job? That wasn't bad. Yeah, I think it was all uh, right for off the cuff. Yeah, I'd have to refine it, but you know, even in its unpolished form, that wasn't bad at all. If you you know, if you put on a mask, like like a helmet filter over that, spit an image. All right, all right. Let's let's calm down. <laughs> he said spitting yeah, image, which is true if you just put the mask on. Like That's for true. PNG. Yeah. A yeah. spitting image for a sound, though. <laughs> I He's don't know about that. He's got a face for bounty hunting. I uh, I uh, it's, yeah. He hires people who try to kill him. That's the remember. He did that a couple times in his show. If you steal water from your subjects and you try and kill him, he will give you a job. Good old Boba. Uh, Good old Boba. Vel's relationship was handled very well, not distracting to the story at all. I'm assuming we're talking about the lesbitisms. Of which, yeah. Well, that was uh, Mon Mothma's sis uh, cousin. Not her sister cousin, I believe. Well, yeah, anybody who thought that, like, got in the way or something, I'd just be like, How? I don't understand. I don't understand that. That's just, some, that's absurd. <laughs> it was part of the problem when you try and review it for having what he was referring to as, like, agenda-driven stuff related to that, and you haven't seen it. Everyone's just wondering what you're talking about, and you're like, what? Uh, yeah. Two minutes of lines that relate yeah, to maybe, maybe a relationship? Maybe, like, maybe five minutes tops. Which, there were, there were, that's, you're allowed to have that for characters when they have relationships. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, extinct animal of the day, Bluff Down's giant python, Fringy's version of the world serpent. Extinct. Giant python. Uh, Bluff Down's Alleged. giant python. Allegedly extinct. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's apparently an extinct species of snake from Queensland. Um, big boy. And it lived during the the early the early uh, Pliocene, so it was about five point three million to two point uh, eight million years ago. The biggest snake found in Australia with a total length of up to nine meters. Um, this rival was the largest uh, extant uh, snake species: the reticulated python from Asia and the green anaconda from South America. And so it was a long boy, yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting to think about, like, the giant animals that used to live in Australia. The mega marsupials, or whatever they were called. Cool. Are there not going to be lesbians in a hundred years? Surely they were lesbians a hundred years ago. <laughs> well, you well, see, it's the just thing the is, idea they're that going it makes to... the story, yeah. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, uh... and... I mean, it, and it's a little bit of a stretch because, as we all know, you know, the, the gays will eventually die out because they don't reproduce. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, for the sake of fantasy, you know, we'll, we'll put them in stuff like that. As yeah, a so. non gay, I have theories that they lay eggs, though. Oh, that's very possible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't rule it out. Especially if they're being portrayed as alive and well in sci fi. That means they're going to somehow hang around. Well, remember, in Star Wars was a long time ago, so they were everywhere. But that's nowadays. True. That was a long yeah. time ago. Galaxy far, far away. It's true. A New Hope is considered in part a Vietnam commentary. Prequels were analyzed to death as a Bush slash War on Terror critique. They've always been a little current. Yeah, no, the, the, it's absurd yeah, to be like, absolutely. if you're drawing modern allegorical things out of the thing, then that means the thing is too mod with like, I don't know, modern messaging or something. It's like, hang on, hang on. 
Yeah, can... that's a bit. Come on now. This is some of the most naive. entertaining shit in the prequels is Palpatine using rhetoric that can easily be like uh, seen as connecting to all kinds of uh, modern political situations. It was intri like um I it's, it's we've talked about this before, but it's just like you just need to tweak the dialogue and those political scenes are some of the best ones in the prequels where he's like convincing that's, the Senate. That's true. And stuff. That is actually true, yeah. Ah, uh, politics boring. Boo. Mola, you're gay, and I'm in lesbians with you. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Can't be in lesbians. That's ridiculous. That's very true. Well, I'm, I don't know about that. Hello, Massives. Hello. Hi. I'm playing Lego Batman 2 while listening to EFAP, and it's actually got more substantive character writing than most things these days. That doesn't surprise me at all. Also, play Little Nightmares and hi, Raggleton. Hello. Hearing about this little nightmares thing. What happened to the big nightmares? Well, the big, uh, big too nightmares. much. You gotta work your way there. I don't know if you can handle them big nightmares. Okay, fine. Those are pretty serious. Let's, uh... Yeah. Work the worst there. rated game recently was War Thunder, with a massive 7%, with over 100k negative reviews last week because of community outrage. You should look into this. Promoted, even. I've got some friends who have uh, said they're going to stop. They're stopping playing that it tank game? Uh, because uh, tanks and planes. Is it something to do with their like uh, microtransactions? Um, I'm not certain. I think a lot of it has to do with like uh, the ba balancing issues and uh, obtaining like the currencies and things in the games. But I don't follow it too closely myself. If my friend was in here, I'm sure he could uh, go on and on about all the issues in it. But mm -hmm. I, I sort of pick it up because I'm. You know, we're pals and we chat and all that, and he plays it, so I, you know, I, I get a whiff of some of the issues, but, you know, it's not a game that I play myself. Think about how Tolkien drew from his Catholicism, Nordic mythology, and The Lord of the Rings, but it's never overtly done or even easy to pick up. I mean, I, I don't have any problem with it being more overt, too. Yeah, yeah. like, what, that doesn't Influence necessarily is matter. Of, more of, uh, God's bluff. It's cool to have, like, uh... No, it's some bobs that you're like, oh, they're referencing this, and this relates to this. I, I oh, okay, I think I see where you're going here. And, uh, and if they were more subtle, then you're just like, oh, that's because like a lot of the names Tolkien came up with are inspired by um, Norse flames, right? That's what people have said, and it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind. It just depends what you're going for, really. The Force can be resisted by imagining playing card games, according to Kotor. Okay. Maybe that was used as a like um like a metaphor or something in some body's training. Mm -hmm. Like oh, if someone's trying to if so if someone's trying to like force something onto you like mentally, you know you can keep your concentration by thinking like imagining you're playing a card game or something like that. You know maybe it's a distracting element of it. Like the more you think about the thing they want you to think about, the more power they have. But if you try and distract yourself. Uh, then you can last longer. You realize 99.9% .9 of the Star Wars galaxy doesn't have the Force, Jedi, Sith, etc. Like, what? Ah, but yep. the Force is all around us. It binds us. It's a part of the yeah. living it. And, and it's like... Luminous beings we are. <laughs> you can make that connection, but then you'd also be like, yeah, but didn't he say Andor doesn't have any of the Force in it? It's like, well, if everything has it, then everything has it. Um... Yeah, talking was all about that shit being like, nah, it's religion, it's over. Shut up. Which is weird if Tarkin lived through the Clone Wars. I don't think about it. Well, no. Um, if Tarkin said that you're all that's left, that ancient religion, it would be weird oh, to call yeah, it ancient, I guess. I guess. He was like, you're, he said like dead religion, yeah. I was about to say, it wouldn't actually be weird for him to call it ancient, right, in terms of referring to when it started. Um. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so that works <coughs> for him, yeah, that works for him. Sweet, crispy, goddamn critters. Chat, GPT appeal. Right? <coughs> uh, hey, did you guys know that Jared is making videos again? Same channel name. You should check out his video called EFAP Continues to be Useless Garbage. Lol, he's so salty. He just wants to be yes. covered. And that's... He just wants to be covered. And also, we already know we're useless garbage. We don't need his... We don't need his video on it. And I find it We're sweet. Fully, fully aware. I think it's sweet. Like he's like, he, he wants to draw us back in. That's all right. We've got other stuff to cover, okay? We've got, we've got all yeah. kinds of things. 
horror, sci-fi, fantasy. Uh, um, what's the other ones? Romantic comedies, comedies in general. A... Uh, shit, there's got to horror... be like one yeah. more. Uh, thriller. Thriller. Mystery. There we go. We got them all. That's it. Trying very hard not to think about how much Kenobi assassinated a new hope. Shout out to my fellow Force users. Live long and prosper, yo. Oh, hey. Yeah. Shout out. Um, I guess that covers both franchises. They live long and prosper, my Force users. With a little bit of tweaking, it's Halo. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. No, when he yeah, said with a little, little bit of the tweaking, chat GPT, little tweaking. No, I know, but is he, oh, is he saying like with a little between and or is Halo? Yeah, he's making the joke, right? You just, uh, yeah. Oh, if you remove Star Wars, right? If you remove lightsabers or the Force, then it is every other science fiction story. Mm. True. What a, what a stupid thing to say. Andor is better Halo than the Halo show, so I'll take it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With a little tweak in, this is Breaking Bad. With a little tweak in, this is The Prawn. prawn the Prawn? <laughs> With a little tweaking, this is Sandwich Molotism. Also, high ranks. Hello. Teletubbies. With a few tweaks, it's Dune. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> you can see the connections, at least. The idea that GPT output describes most sci-fi shows is particularly stupid for Stargate and Trek because the protagonists are agents of the status quo. That that whole section of his video was so ill-advised. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like, why did you do that? You're going to lose a lot of people <laughs> with that kind of statement. This guy's arguments sound exactly like Gary and Az. They don't make arguments like that with... Let's, like, okay, calm down. <laughs> the, uh... the only thing that separates Stargate and Star Wars is the Force? Like, no, they would never say that. SCP of the da, 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 day. Da, 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 da. SCP of the day is the SCP rolls on Canon JKSCP 4000. I'm going to paste SCP that. 4000. So do with that what you wish. Yeah, I. Oh, this is rated very highly. Extremely highly. 26,500 upvotes. Jeez. Um. I'll keep this up on my side monitor uh, to read later because is something that's rated this highly is pretty must be pretty impressive. You want, is there a, a anything stuff. you can do for now, or is it something? Just too big? Um, uh, special containment procedures. Uh, these aren't really written in an easy way to. It, it's an extra dimensional forested area. With numerous anomalous qualities, includes, including a hazardous nomenclative phenomenon, this anomalous location is accessed by performing a 4000 Halloway. See document attached. After completing the procedure, subjects emerge from the opening of a dilapidated brick wall fixed into the forest floor. The only way to reliably traverse the unusual terrain is by use of a single dirt path. Uh, yeah, it just goes on. It's These are long. A lot of these don't owe themselves well to be read aloud because they're like the thing about scp is like i really really like them but they're like essentially mini short stories a lot of the times on the entries that flesh out what the anomaly or the creature or the phenomenon is so this yeah i it's just like paragraphs of stuff on it and a lot of them are amazing but yeah they don't owe themselves well to like super chat stuff Very some well. do i guess if they're really if they're really short and concise but not necessarily, yeah. Oh, um, the SCP Foundation has the pride colors on its logo. That's a that's a fucking lore. Jeez. <laughs> like it affects the lore. It's like, hey, it's like, yeah, like the SC the SCP Foundation would definitely okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely it's like it's like Chucky the wearing the pride colors or something. It's like uh... kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. The Incredibles Two is an underrated movie. No. No, The Incredibles 2 sucks. No, it's, it's pretty bad, actually. The Incredibles 2 is bad. Oh, but, but that's the first half. Second half. I especially loved when Edna grew seven feet, got swollen, said it's Moden time, and moded all over the place. No. Okay. See, there you go. Why'd you, why'd you <laughs> leave Modus. that out? It's Moden time. <laughs> because I needed it known that we can't even joke that Incredibles 2 is underrated. 
Yes, <laughs> it upset me that movie. Just like to Toy Story Four upset me. Just oh, like yeah, Monsters University did not upset me. No, Monsters University is like just pretty middling. That's yeah. what it is. It's just like a middling. Whereas, yeah, Toy Story Four was like infuriating. That was a tough one. There's an EFAP movies on that. If you're curious what we thought of it, indeed, <laughs> you should watch it. It's quite painful. Uh, Spock had the neck pinch and mind meld. Couldn't that be considered force powers? He also mentally controlled a woman in the Yangs versus Kongs episode. Don't Probably try to make not sense force of this. Powers, no. Don't try to. No. What they re the reason they're saying this is because the guy said Star Trek is just Star Wars without the force, and the force are you know powers in in some sense. So. You know, there are plenty of equivalent things people can do in the Star Trek universe that might be considered equivalent to the Force, but don't even try to entertain it. Just ignore it. The, the comment was so fucking dumb that, that you know, the, all those sci-fi shows are the same, but when you add the Force, you get Star Wars. It's like, no, stop it. Sit down. Just sit, sit down. Relax. Broaden your horizons. Best Buffy slash Angel writer. Oh, Joss Whedon. Uh, of the team, Mutant Enemy team, that wrote and directed the whole thing. Um, there's plenty of good writers in there. But he consistently, whenever he gets the writer or director or both credits, it's uh, all the big special episodes that are amazing are usually him or his. I'm pretty sure my four top picks for both shows are, like, all his. Like, oh, shit, well. But uh, still, plenty of good, good, good folk in there doing good stuff. Also, be a bad EFAP when... One day. One day. Hey, Mola, if it's no trouble, could you play Sekiro while or when nothing is going on? It's seriously one of the best From games and some of the best bosses. I will I've at some point. plenty of people saying that it's their favorite. I shall get around to it in the future years. Not sure when exactly, but I will. Sekiro. The first half of Dark Souls 1... Uh, B E G O N S is peak, but I think the second half is noticeably worse. Do y'all still hold the opinion that the entire game is the best From Software game? Thoughts? Hi, Mauler. All of From Software's games have issues, as one would put it. Um, I do currently, I think, hold the position that Dark Souls 1 is the best experience. Um, but that goes beyond just mechanics, though I really like the mechanics in that. And I think the balancing of the health peaked with Dark Souls 1. I think all the other games have trouble figuring it out, which is... I don't know how that happened. But, um... Yeah, Dark Souls... or Like, Bloodborne, I adore. There's, like, a lot of issues with that game. And then Sekiro I haven't played, but as far as I can tell, if I was to play it thoroughly, I would possibly think it's, like, my new favorite. But that's what I've heard. So there you go. Principles are underrated, and or villains have principles that are respected. Darth Fring just shows up being an asshole because the script said so. Darth Fring. He's, what do we know about him? Well, uh, he, wears, uh, he wears this green mask with his beak on it. And he's got yellow eyes, and he's got this brown robe. And, robe? You know, yeah, like, it's, like, it's like a robe, kind of like, like a jacket kind of robe. Because some, some think it's like a trench coat, um, and he's got like a green shirt underneath it, uh, and he's got his hood, right? He's he got his brown hood, and, you know, he, he dabbles a bit in the arts, you know, he draws a bit, the and, you, know, you know, works on a computer for a bit, and he's from a mystical land that some argue isn't even real. Well, it's in but Stranger Darth Things, Fring, it's called The Upside Down, I think. Yeah, I think so. It makes sense. Geographically, it makes sense that it's called the Upside Down. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Darth Fring is, uh, he, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. He's, he's an odd one. Where are the lightsabers? Where's Darth Vader? Also, the bit rags. What? I don't know Cyrillic or whatever it is. Oh, ah, yet. That's hello. No, it's not. You made that up. I did not make it up. Someone else made it up, and I'm just going along with what they think. So there. Wow. Ha. Huh. Can't call me a leader. How many directors would even say COVID saved their show? I don't think any of oh, them man. could or would. This was like, this is the first time we'd ever even heard of this. Like COVID stopped production, so I redrafted. It's like what? What? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Almost like a kid. Whoa. I have this dream that your Last of Us 2 video will be as long in minutes as it's been days since you promised it to us. <laughs> I.e. it'll be at least 1,033 minutes long. 
How many hours I was there? I wish I had gotten off. Like, 10, 20, 18 hours, something like that? I'm gonna have to make it even longer by the time I decide to actually make it. If that ever happens, I had potentially in a different timeline. Tony, COVID gave me the time to rewrite all my scripts and everyone else's scripts. Thank you, Tony. Feckin' thank you. Well, I've been talking about redrafting forever. It's, it's a superpower people don't utilize. They just assume, ah, oh, I did it already. It's done. It was good. It's fine the first time. Whatever I put down, probably really good. What they pay me for? I ace it first time. Anyone so gonna I try... makes the big bucks. Anyone gonna try Bolt Gun? Heard mostly good things so far. Yeah, I got a recommendation from Mark, uh, the cyborg, the other day about it, and uh, oh no, he gave me a copy. That was it. That oh. was that discussion. Yeah, he gave me a copy. So I'm, I'm thinking about yeah, delving into it. It's it was on my to do list. Uh, so it, it's definitely on my to do list. Odd, oddly enough, though, I've gotten bitten by the Minecraft bug. So oh, that's no. uh, that's what I've been kind of playing. I've been playing Minecraft. Uh, quite a bit. All, all wonderful, beautiful, oh, miny boy. magical Minecraft. Oh well, how about it? Uh, with a little tweaking, an olive is a grape. Not much tweaking at all. I swear, every podcast I see just reminds me of how good EFAP is by comparison. You guys make all the other podcasts look bad. Oh my. Um, <laughs> interesting. Siri. I don't want to make anyone look bad, unless they're shit and they suck and they say mean things about us. Yeah, or mean uh, things you know. in general. Or mean things in general, Those but meaners. particularly to us. Yeah. With a little tweaking, mm -hmm. pizza crackers are a thing. Yeah. Hmm, I suppose it's true. This one says, who drew this? Uh, I, I think they're talking about the Beowin drawing. Uh, yeah, Beowin, it's good stuff. Short man is bad man, high ranks. Hello. I like this Tony guy. I like him too. Neat. Tony. Yeah. Hey, okay. He's all right in my book. I would love to have a chat with him off the record. See what he really feels. You know, open up to me, valiant <laughs> prince. You spoiled us with length for so long, Mubel. What do you mean? We've got an average length of episode that's at like seven or eight hours or something. Therefore, if you get a five hour one and then you get like an hour and a half catch up pretty much the same as it's always been <laughs> same as it ever was Mootle is now longer than you hi rags no he's uh, not hello. he has not to make a video way. that's longer than six hours first as soon as he does that he can have the title yeah remember when Jay was like did you make your video that long to make one that was longer than my Doctor Who one I was like no <laughs> like the Doctor Strange one. <laughs> Metal outlonged you, Virgin Morley versus Chad Mootle. Nobody would say Chad Mootle. This is kind of psyop. Very true. <laughs> we Jeez. are the EFAP audience. We expect length. You gotta do longer, EFAP. You gotta step up. Short man bad, Morley rage. Well, you guys got your eight hour one soon after this on the Cinema Wars. Which was a, a fight well spent. We learned a lot. Cinema Wars. And uh, we got one left. It says, hey. Pokemon of the day, Darumaka, Pokemon entry white. White. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, definitely got to post a picture now. <laughs> I think this is him. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at him. <laughs> and then there's also uh, there's this one as well. So I don't know what the difference is between these two, but there's this uh -huh. version, and then there's also this version. So I'm guessing maybe they're different depending on which game. Oh, he's cold maybe. now. Maybe. Or they're like different Man, elements I, uh, of a similar Pokemon. Got to tell fire, you, I really water, like maybe? him. I really yeah, like, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's look at him. Oh. <laughs> I guess they want us to check out his Pokemon White entry. Oh, uh, oh, right, because the entries are always like some crazy Lovecraftian like horror. Well, we had one today that was pretty chill, right? So 
I'm sure we'll be uh, back. To... <laughs> the, yeah. Hmm. How do we find this shit? Darun How do we find it? Uh, in the Pokedex, right? Uh. Oh Jesus! What is happening here? Where is the entry? This isn't. This isn't simple. Uh, Pokedex entries. I think I might have found it. In all kinds of stuff here. Let's see. Uh. I know what he can do. When its internal fire is burning, it cannot calm down and runs around. When the fire diminishes, it falls asleep. Oh, okay. Nice. Darumaka's droppings are hot, so people use them to put in their clothes to keep themselves warm. That's horse shit. No one does that. <laughs> maybe like that one, like maybe on some island they do that, but like, no, come on. When I it sleeps, they're... it pulls mm. its limbs into its body and its internal fire goes down to 1,100 Fahrenheit. Oh, wow, that's still really hot. It's very hot. Don't touch him, even when he's sleeping. Oh, hey, man, when his, you know, droppings are so hot, people use them for heat, so... <laughs> dropping so like it's hot. hot, dropping like it's hot. Oh, God. People are weird. That's what we've learned. People mm -hmm. are strange. The world of Pokemon is a strange, bizarro universe. That it, is well, what I mean, I've come course. to learn. Yeah. And with that, we are finito with the messages for the Andor EFAP. Thanks so much for sending them in. For your kind, kind yeah, donation. Thanks. We Appreciate will see it. you on the next EFAP thing, whatever it may be. Toodles yeah, for now. Bye-bye. Yeah, goodbye, everyone. See, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.